Hello and thanks for joining us at interest.co.nz. I'm Janae Tibshirani and today I'm joined by Housing and Urban Development Minister Phil Twyford. Thanks for your time, Minister. Hi, Janae. Um, look, back in January, you said that um, there would be a Kiwi Build recalibration and that the government would be scrapping some of the targets um, in this electoral term. Then in April, you said that you were nearly there with this recalibration. What's the hold up? So we're taking the time to get it right. Um, we're looking at not just Kiwi Build, you know, our program to um, build more affordable homes for first home buyers, but we're looking at the entire housing program, which is a it's a big comprehensive program that goes right from um, trying to house homeless people right through to our urban growth agenda, the reform of the planning system and infrastructure financing and everything in between. Um, and we're taking time to get it right. Uh, and um, I think we've pretty much landed it, but um, we're in the pre-budget period right now, so we're going to do a little bit more work on it and looking to um, announce it publicly after the budget, so probably mid-June. Mid-June. Yeah. Um, where are the sort of, uh, are there any sort of points that are hooking, I guess, or, or holding up the, the process? Oh, it's just, um, it's a big complex beast. You know, the um, not only is the housing crisis uh, a very complicated uh, thing with a lot of moving parts that has um, decades of compounding policy failure. But we've got a program of work that has, um, you know, uh, six, eight different components, how they all interact with each other, um, the support we give to first home buyers, trying to work with yeah. uh, private developers to get them to build more affordable homes. Um, we're looking at a whole range of things that, you know, one of the things is that Kiwi Build was first um, designed at a time when people were very, very focused on first home buyers in the expensive markets like Auckland. Well, that's changed now, and you look at one of the striking things about the ha about housing in New Zealand now is the stress on renters in a number of different parts of the country. Right. So, so is your focus um, changing at all? I mean, what is hap basically what is what is happening? Because you have um, from January to June is a is a very long time. I know these are big complex problems, but mm. but what is going on? Are you changing your focus at all? So I'm not going to announce the Kiwi Build reset uh, now, sure. but um, we we have looked at the whole of the housing program okay. and where Kiwi Build sits within it. I will say this: we're not going to step away from our commitment to help first home buyers, nor to increase the supply of housing and the supply of affordable housing. Okay. Will that target of a hundred thousand houses? Uh, within 10 years of you taking government, will that remain? Well, that's something we've been looking at and we'll have more to say about that when we announce the reset. Okay, so you can't confirm whether that will stay? Well, I'm not, I'm not confirming or denying it. It's like American uh, nuclear ships in the 1980s. It's a okay, neither confirm it, nor deny yeah, situation. But if, but if it was staying, then you would say, yes, it's, it's staying. No, I wouldn't read that into it. Well, that's how I'm reading it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would suggest you don't. I'm just, um, I'm not going to reveal uh, sure. uh, the policy decisions now. We'll do that in uh, June. Okay, yeah. will you put numerical targets on the number of houses you want to see built under Kiwi Build for this electoral term? That's another thing that we'll talk about in, in June. Okay, so. do you think you sort of shot yourself in the foot a little mm. bit by putting such ambitious numbers on the programme? I mean, they, they were ambitious, you admitted it, but yeah. it's sort of landed you in a bit of hot water now. Yeah, I mean, there's been plenty of commentary on that, and uh, and I, I mean, I cop that uh, criticism really, but I'm I'm less concerned with the politics of it than putting in place a policy that delivers. And but you've only you know, delivered to 71 homeowners under Kiwi Build, so it's sure. taking it's taking its time. And that is a big concern for me. But th this is a this is a policy that is something that um, governments have not even attempted in New Zealand sure. for more than 40 years. We're working directly with the private sector to get them to build more affordable homes in a way that governments did for successive decades from the 50s, 60s and 70s. Okay. Highly successful policies, but it's not easy. No. If it was um, uncomplicated, yeah. the former government probably would have had a crack at it. Sure. Okay. I just want to talk about the underwrite. Um, mm. So this is the, the, the one of the main ways that Kiwi Build is being done is you're underwriting private developers. Yep. What is the criteria specifically that those developers need to meet um, for you to say, yes, cool, we will we will stand behind you. The taxpayer will stand behind you. So the uh, officials in the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, they do due diligence with uh, uh, developers who want to be part of the um, that program. 
And they look at the uh, track record of the developers, their ability to pull off um, uh, developments uh, at scale, uh, and they apply this test of additionality. So uh, this is all set out in the Kiwi Build business case that was signed off by Cabinet. And so they look for developments that will bring um, more houses to the market, that will reduce the cost of the houses by reducing build costs and risk and margin, mm. um, that will bring uh, new homes to market um, sooner than they otherwise would have. Right. So. Um, this additionality test, there's mm. been some controversy around that because it's been reported that the Ministry said there was no such test and that's the test you've been talking about and the National Party has mm. been wanting to see evidence of this test and, and they haven't been able to get it. Mm. I mean, is there a test? Well, let, let me say this first. It's a controversy with the National Party. <laughs> I don't think, well, well, to be there, honest, I don't, I don't think that any... This is a storm in a teacup, and I just don't think that anyone else is particularly interested in this. Well, there no. is clearly an additionality test. All oh, right? so there is? Yeah. Okay. And that, is, that test is, is, um, is implemented by ministry officials in the course of negotiations with, with builders who want to be part of the Kiwi Build program. The National Party Research Unit... Um, asked a question under the Official Information Act asking for the additionality assessment. Right. And the Ministry interpreted that as them asking for a specific document. There is no document that is an, an, a, an additionality assessment, but the additionality test is, um, is included in all of the discussions and the negotiations that go towards negotiating a contract. And so, um, after the National Party raised this in the House, I talked to the Ministry officials and we realised that they had, I think, narrowly misinterpreted the question. And okay. so there are other documents that are available, but they are commercially sensitive, so they won't be released. Well, th that, is the, that is the difficult point, really, mm. is that under the Official Information Act, documents are often released and the commercially sensitive parts are redacted. So it's as easy as just, you know, putting mm. a line through the number and the name um, and at least providing some template. Mm. Can you make some sort of commitment to actually revealing some of that stuff? Because the cost that taxpayers could bear are in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So in the... For the sake of transparency, do you not think that people should have a, understand the, the process a bit more? Look, these, these documents are part of commercial negotiations. The Ministry's advice to me is that they won't be releasing them. It's not possible to release them because they are commercially sensitive. I accept that advice. Okay, so not a bit, it's not a bit loose? Because that's what the you know uh, perception is. And at the moment, in all due respect to Kiwi Build, is mm. that the, the perception does need to be managed a little bit more tightly. Well, I think that's, that's um, opposition politicking that we've seen from the National Party. Um, look, I'm, I'm satisfied that the Ministry have conducted these negotiations with um, uh, the, the right kind of rigour that is expected both by Treasury and by the Chief Executive of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development. Okay. Um, look, I, I just want to talk about the Housing and Urban Development Authority. Mm. When, so just for, for people listening, that is basically mm. the government wants to introduce legislation to streamline the building of houses mm. um, in designated areas, so override some of the uh, authority that local government has. When do you expect to see the first bill t to enable this introduced? Sure. So um, I expect that we'll have legislation in the Parliament either late May or early June uh, and aiming to have it passed within the following few months. And the aim is to have the new Housing and Urban Development Authority established by the 1st of October. Right. And this is critical to our plans yep. for the build program. Um, we've always believed that most of the Kiwi Build homes would be built in large-scale projects. But um, in many cases, we're going to be doing these regeneration projects in places where there's a lot of housing New Zealand land. So we're, we're renovating and rebuilding public housing, uh, housing for sale on the open market, and um, subsidised or affordable housing, Kiwi Build, and other things. And it's an opportunity to, to redevelop whole new communities, whole new suburbs. Right, look, the um, Welfare Expert Advisory Group in its mm. report that it released last week uh, suggested a number of ways that housing could become more affordable through various government initiatives. Mm. Um, it talked about rent-to-buy schemes, shared equity, and even uh, government sort of providing lower interest rates or, or microfinancing. Mm. What are your views on, on some of these things? How workable c could they be? So I thought that the Welfare Expert Advisory Group had some really um, important things to say generally, but particularly about housing. The mm. 
housing crisis has been one of the major drivers of poverty and inequality for yeah. the last two decades. And I thought they had some, uh, some very practical suggestions. So we're very interested in uh, how we can um, uh, scale up shared equity programs, for example, that might sit alongside Kiwi Build and give people a bit of a leg up people who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford what? to take on a mortgage in a place that's as expensive as Auckland. So what do you mean sit alongside KiwiBuild? So KiwiBuild's about um, supplying uh, affordable home, modest affordable starter homes mm. for first home buyers. But there's a whole lot of people out there who um, would, would in all other respects have the wherewithal to take on a mortgage mm. and become a homeowner. But the gap between their income and the house price is too great. Sure. So shared equity is a way that you I see, make, so separate to Kiwi Build is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, but it yep, could yep. sit alongside it. Yep. So helping people to get a Kiwi Build house oh, who I otherwise see. would really struggle to take on, let's say, a, a half a million dollar mortgage. I see. So um, they also, the, the expert advisory group also raised um, questions about affordable rentals. We're very interested in that as well. We, okay. we need to um, provide more and better options that provide security of tenure for people who are renters. Sure, just with the shared equity, have you been talking to banks about that? We have actually. And what's the response been? Uh, there's a lot of interest both amongst banks and amongst the non-profit community. Um, there are a number of iwi who are working on projects uh, like this. So there's a lot of interest. Mm. And uh, we saw recently BNZ announced a shared equity uh, scheme. So there's some really good thinking going on. And, uh, and we're looking at how government can be part of that and how we might be able to help people scale up some of these programs. Okay, Minister, I just want to finally come back to Kiwi Build. Mm. Um, with the uh, authority happening mm. and you know, you're looking at some of these other options, yeah. it does seem, and also with the Building Act review, which is a huge piece of work underway, mm. it does seem like once some of these fundamental things are in place, there might not actually even be a need for Kiwi Build. Well, that's a problem I'd love to have. Um, to be honest, Janae, uh, uh, this housing crisis took decades to get to the state that it is. We're not going to fix it overnight. Uh, and there's no silver bullet. And we've never considered Kiwi Build to be a silver bullet. Helping first home buyers get a, a home of their own is a really important part of it. But we have to tackle the worst homelessness mm. that New Zealand's seen in generations. We have to reform the planning system. We've got to bring find new ways of financing infrastructure. We've got to make life better for renters, more security of tenure. Sure. We desperately need more public housing. So we're doing all of these things. Kiwi Build is just one um, important slice of that much bigger picture. Sure. Minister Phil Twyford, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. And I'm Janae Tibshirani from interest.co.nz.